Now that we've taken a look at what vector valued functions are, we're ready to answer the question that we really care about because this is a calculus class. How do we do calculus of vectored valued functions? And let's start with the first part of calculus, calc 1, where we took derivatives. And quite simply, to take the derivative of a vectored valued function, we're going to take the derivative of each component. So let's do some examples where we do just that. First, let's take the vectored valued function r of t is 6t plus 8i plus 4t squared plus 2t minus 3j. The derivative of the vectored valued function, which will denote r prime of t, is simply the derivative of each component. The derivative of 6t plus 8 is just 6 i's, plus the derivative of the polynomial is 8t plus 2 times the j vector. And there is our derivative. Let's try and make them a little more interesting. Let's say the vectored valued function r of t is e to the t sine t times i plus e to the t cosine t j minus e to the 2t k. And we're going to find the derivative of our vectored valued function r prime of t. Well, our first pro uh, derivative is a product. So we remember we have to use the product rule, which is the derivative of the first part, e to the t, times the second, sine of t, plus the derivative of the second part, which is cosine of t, times the first, e to the t, times the i component, plus Again, using our product rule, the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second, which is going to give us negative sign, times the first, which is e to the t, times the j component, minus the derivative of e to the 2t is e to the 2t. Using the chain rule, times the derivative of the inside is 2, times the k component. And now we've got our derivative. Let's try r of t is equal to t natural log of t i plus 5 e to the t j plus the cosine of t minus the sine of t k. And so our derivative, r prime of t, again, we've got a product rule. So we take the derivative of the first, which is 1, times the natural log of t, plus the derivative of the second, which is 1 over t, times the first, which is t, all times i, plus 5e to the tj. That's a pretty straightforward derivative, plus derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of sine is cosine times the k. A little bit of simplifying, just simplifying that t over t is 1. So we find out our derivative of the vector valued function is the natural log of t plus 1 times i plus 5e to the t times j plus negative sine of t 
minus the cosine of t, k. And we have our derivative of the vector valued function. One of the most common and useful purposes for the derivative of vector valued functions is to find what are called tangent vectors. And similar to a tangent line being tangent to the curve at a point, being the first derivative, it works exactly the same with vectors. We're going to find the tangent at a point. Let's say the vector r of t is equal to the cosine of t times i plus the sine of t times j. And we're going to find the tangent vector at the point t equals pi over 6. Well, the derivative is just component-wise, gives us the negative sine of t times i plus the cosine of t times j. And we're being asked to find the tangent vector specifically at the point pi over 6, negative sine of pi over 6i plus the cosine of pi over 6j, which if we simplify, the sine of pi over 6, pi over 6 is at uh, root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Sine being the y-coordinate gives us the 1 half, so we have negative 1 half i plus the cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2 j. This vector then can be positioned so it's tangent to the point at time equals pi over 6. Visually, what we're looking at if you remember from parametric equations, graphing x equals cosine, y equals sine, that's actually just the unit circle going around counterclockwise. And we're specifically interested at when time is pi over 6. And if we were to draw a tangent vector right there, it could be written in component form as negative 1 half i plus root 3 over 2j. And that would be the same as the component vector coming out of the origin. It's going in the same direction. Because remember, vectors don't have a location. They just have a direction and magnitude. Speaking of magnitude, there's no rule by just taking the derivative that really dictates the magnitude of that tangent vector. And so usually we like to standardize how we think about tangent vectors by saying we're going to be particularly interested in the unit tangent vector. That way, no matter how you get your tangent vector, it's always going to be the exact same length. The unit tangent vector is a very special vector that we're going to use throughout this chapter. We're going to call it capital T of t. And it is simply just the derivative of the basic vector, r of t, divided by the magnitude of that derivative. So first, we're going to find the tangent vector. And then we'll make it a unit vector by dividing by its magnitude. So let's try an example where we do just that. Let's say the vector r of t is equal to t squared minus 3i plus 2t plus 1j plus t minus 2k. And we want the unit tangent vector to this vector. We're going to do this generally, not at any specific point. We're going to do it generally for any point t. We could find it at a specific point if we had a t value we were particularly interested in. But for this example, let's just do it generally. So first, we need to know the derivative of our vector valued function r. 
which is 2ti plus 2j plus 1k. But that is not a unit vector. So to get our special vector, our unit tangent vector, we're going to find the magnitude of the derivative. And we remember the magnitude is the square root of the square of the components. 2t squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared, which gives us the square root of 4t squared plus 4 plus 1, which is 5. That tells us then that the unit tangent vector, that special vector t of t, is 1 over the square root of 4t squared plus 5 times the derivative, which is 2t comma 2 comma 1 in component form. If we wanted to, we could distribute that divide by the square root, giving us just the vector 2t over the square root of 4t squared plus 5, comma 2 over the square root of 4t squared plus 5, comma 1 over the square root of 4t squared plus 5. And now we have a vector of unit length. It's always going to have a length of 1 that will always be tangent to the vector r of t. We're going to come back to unit tangent vectors in our future sections and explain why they're so important and helpful to us as we're working with vectored valued functions. But for now, we're just going to find them generally like we did in this example, or we could find them specifically at a point. If I knew t was equal to 7 seconds, we could evaluate that. But for now, let's step away from derivatives. We still have to look at the second half of calculus which is integration. And just like derivatives, we can take the derivative component at a time. We can take the antiderivative of each component But just like before in Calc 2, when we took an integral, we would always have plus a constant. We need to reflect that here also, but we need to express that constant is a vector. So we're going to say it's plus a constant vector, which we will represent with a c, with the vector symbol above it representing some vector made up of three constants, constant 1, constant 2, constant 3. So for example, if we're being asked to find the integral of 2t plus 4i plus 3t squared minus 4t j dt, we can integrate this one component at a time. Integrating the i component, we end up with t squared plus 4t times the i plus the j component becomes t cubed minus 2t squared times the j component. But because this is not a definite integral, we need to also add a constant vector to our final solution. And so we're integrating component, one component at a time to get our final solution. Let's do one last example. Let's do a definite integral this time. Let's go from 0 to pi over 3 of the vectored valued function sine of 2ti plus the tangent of t j plus e to the negative 2t k dt. Evaluating one component at a time, the antiderivative of sine is the cosine of 2t, actually the negative cosine. 
To account for the times 2, we need a 1 half out front times the i component plus the antiderivative of tangent, you might remember, is negative natural log of the cosine of t, j. Remember, that comes from writing tangent as sine over cosine and then using uh, substitution to integrate. Plus antiderivative of e to the negative 2t is e to the negative 2t. But we have to multiply by a negative 1 half to account for that. 2 times the k component. And we're just going to integrate this entire thing from 0 to pi over 3. And we'll do that substitution one component again at a time. So first with the i, we have negative 1 half cosine of 2t, or 2 pi over 3, plus 1 half cosine of 2 times 0 is 0, times i, plus Plugging pi over 3 into the natural log, we get negative natural log of the cosine of pi over 3 plus the natural log of the cosine of 0. All of that's your j component plus negative 1 half e to the negative 2 pi over 3 plus 1 half e to the 0, all that times the k component. Simplifying, let's see what we have left. Uh, cosine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be 2 pi over 3 is over here on the unit circle. So that's going to be negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So the x-coordinate's the negative 1 half. So negative 1 half times negative 1 half plus 1 half times the cosine of 0 is 1, i, plus the negative natural log of the cosine of pi over 3, 1 pi over 3, is a positive 1 half root 3 over 2. So the natural log of 1 half plus the natural log of cosine of 0 is 1. That's going to be nice because the natural log of 1 is 0 times the j component plus not much simplifying that we're left with on this last part. I'm going to put the positive 1 half in front just because it makes it pretty minus 1 half e to the negative 2 pi over 3 times the k component. And so one time through, left to simplify, we end up with 1 fourth plus 1 half is 3 fourths i minus the natural log of 1 half j plus 1 half minus 1 half e to the negative 2 pi over 3 k. And now we found the antiderivative of our vectored valued function from 0 to pi over 3. So calculus with vectored valued functions, not too difficult. It's just basically extending what we saw in Calc 1 and Calc 2 with derivatives and integrals, just doing it with every single component all the way through. We also introduced this idea of the unit tangent vector. That's going to be very important to us as this chapter progresses. So take a look at a few of these on the practice assignment. We will see you in class to answer any questions you may have.